Technology, the very thing we've been using for centuries. But how did these goofy looking people eventually create Wi-Fi? Good question. First, we need to go back in time. Wait, no, go a little more. Stop. There we go. This is what I like to call the ogre area. I call it that because cavemen remind me of ogres for some reason. Stone tools. I mean, these things were cool, I guess. They could help you survive by hunting and cutting food. And that's about it. Simple enough, right? Well, you know what isn't simple? Sailing. I mean, it is pretty simple, but... <clears throat> the sailboat. One of the first amazing ways you could get across big, huge bodies of water without drowning. The wheel on the boat is used to control the sail to steer in the direction you want it to go. They use these sailboats for transportation and to trade with other countries around the Mediterranean Sea. And one item everyone wanted to trade throughout years was iron, our next form of technology. Iron, or you could say Iren, that's the word it originated from by the way, I thought it sounded cool. Iron was mainly used for building tools, like an axe, a pickaxe, an anvil, an enchanting book, sharpness 5. Iron was mainly used for weapons and tools, but what came with iron, kind of like a two-for-one deal at your nearest grocery store, was bronze. Bronze was used for similar things to iron, but it was also used for architecture, which is like building things, instruments, and more epic things. You know what else is epic? Raid Shadow Legends. No, I'm just kidding. This isn't sponsored. It isn't sponsored. It isn't sponsored. Compass. Like, compass is cool. Before compasses, they had to use the sun and celestial bodies. In simpler way of printing it, celestial bodies are natural objects outside of the Earth's atmosphere to tell direction. This gets me wondering, how in the world did we use things like star symbols to determine where to go? Crazy. Anyways, the first compass is actually made using iron. For the compass to work, there's a small little magnetized needle that always pulls in the direction of the northern hemisphere. By looking at the compass, you could tell which direction you wanted to go by <laughs> looking at it. You see, a lot of inventions would not exist in the first place without the printing press. The printing press was used to share large amounts of information quickly and efficiently in huge numbers. Well, how did it work? In the first printing press, movable type was moved over a flat wooden plate, which was called the lower platen. Ink was applied to the type, then a sheet of paper was laid on top. The upper platen was then brought down onto the lower platen, and when they both sandwiched together, it created a print. Again, this is the reason for almost every other invention later on in this video. Choo choo, steam engine. Now we're finally at the time where there are names for inventions, instead of like ancient Egyptians and stuff like that. Thomas Savory was the creator of the steam engine, but the man who really improved it was named James Watt. This guy created a steam engine that was powered by air pressure. This air pushed the piston, let's call it a pushy thing, into a vacuum. The vacuum sucked in the air pressure, and then steam was condensed so it could not expand. Its most used form was to collect water from mines, but it's now used for things like trains, ships, and factories. But wait, where do trains travel on? The road? No, 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 no. Railways. Richard Trevithick took the steam engine, implemented it into a train thingamajig, and used it for transport. See, now this is when the video gets better. Now is when these inventions get cooler. For example, photography. See, with photos being added into our world, bros acting like we get updates, bros talking to himself, bros insane. With the invention of photos, you can now take a photo about anything you want anywhere and get a printed version of it. See, this is a picture I took in 1826 of me beside the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower was made 60 years later, by the way, but that's still me, so like, subscribe. Anyways, how did this camera work? Well, the inventor, Nisafor Nieps, put lithographic stones coated with bitumen at the back of the camera obscura and obtained the first Emmer image. If you wanted to see, this was the first picture that was ever taken with this camera, by the way. Now for our next big hit, the telephone. This is probably one of the most still used inventions to this day. For the telephone to work, there was a signal sent through a wire using dots and dashes. At the end of this wire, there was a needle. When Alexander, aka the creator of the telephone, first spoke into the end of the device, his voice made the needle and paper that was beside it vibrate. These vibrations were took and converted into an electric current which traveled along the wire to the receiver, creating the first ever communication using not face-to-face -face conversation. Well, if you wanted to talk to someone, you usually like to see their face, right? Well, to do that, you need light. Thomas Edison, the creator of the light bulb. Lots of people don't think he created it, but honestly, I don't even know. Anyways, the first source of light that wasn't the sun was fire. But fire can't be put in the middle of your living room, or else you know what will happen. That's why the light bulb was invented. I'm reading the simple terms off of Google, by the way, and there's no way this is in simpler terms. Anyway, that's why I'm here. Inside of the light bulb, there was metal that couldn't melt. I wonder why. The electricity traveled into this metal, causing the wire to glow, and some of that energy is turned into light. Now, whenever you have a wonderful, cartoony idea, that light bulb will appear behind your head and light right up. 
My cartoony idea is that you should subscribe with notifications to help me hit 1,000 subscribers. Next, automobiles. So this is like cars powered by steam instead of using things like horses. When this steam car burned fuel, it heated water in a boiler. When the water boiled, the gas exited the boiling water and expanded and pushed pistons which turned a crankshaft. The crankshaft turned all four axles which spun the wheels and moved the car. There you have it, a working automobile. Room. Wait, where's my music? Let me turn on the radio. The radio? Yes, in fact, the radio. The first radio wasn't actually used for music, it was used for communication, but a radio is a radio. A man named Macaroni, totally, created a design using a coherer, a glass tube filled with iron, that conducted radio waves. Awesome sauce. These radio waves lifted balloons, yep, good old balloons, to lift the antenna as high as possible. Every time the antenna was lifted, it was like a signal. At the time, only Morse code, letters that are represented with dots and dashes, was used for communication. In fact, I just sent a Morse code letter to Bob in America who's watching soccer on the TV. Wait, the TV? The TV used a mechanical camera that consists of large spinning discs. By the way, I made a video about discs. You should go watch it after this video. It then projected a picture onto a screen. Pretty cool. You know what else projects pictures onto screens? Computers. Now when computers were first invented, they took up almost a whole room. But two men named Steve and Steve created a computer that doesn't take up a whole room, but rather could be held with your two hands. I have another full video explaining that, so go watch it after this video as well. Well, hold on. Have we ever took into account how you're actually watching this video? Internet. That's how you're watching this video. And what's our next invention? The Back Scratcher 3000 Ultimate Supreme. Nah, I'm kidding. It's internet. Internet is a global network with billions of users. The internet uses Wi-Fi that transmits data using radio waves to your nearest signal antenna thing. The signal is sent over, then is sent back to be decoded. It's then decoded using zeros and ones and blah 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 and now you have Wi-Fi. Finally, for our final invention, <laughs> AI. Probably the scariest, coolest, and most shocking invention out of them all. Things like ChatGPT, robots, mobile apps, and almost everything you use uses AI. Every single day since AI has been created, scientists have been studying the human brain and analyzing their thinking process. Every day that we learn more about humans' thinking patterns, the closer AI gets to becoming more similar to humans. Now if that's not creepy, I don't know what is. If you want a full video about AI or any of the topics in this video, comment down below. I would greatly appreciate if you paid up, you know, using this beautiful cash register right here and give me one subscribe in return. Thanks for watching.